Hey guys, just figured I'd uh, show you this quick little thing I figured out today that I could do. Um, so a lot of people ask me about, you know, what's um, forensics mode in, uh, excuse me, Kali Linux, and um, what's the point of using uh, forensics mode? So going to show you here how easy it is to get it going. So I've got um, VMware Workstation on my server, so I'm just going to show you this cool little trick that I figured out today. So basically in a nutshell, um, Kali Linux Forensics Mode, when you put it on a live USB stick, right, so you, you can uh, Google how to do that, how to make a USB stick, and when you start up your machine you can boot off that USB stick or ISO and uh, you'll get the options like I'm going to show you in a minute so basically it's like a forensics mode and it just says here that um, let's see it's easily available it's widely and easily available um, so it's quick to get it going like if you're on a job or whatever and um, you know it has all the software that you need to do you know most most of your basic stuff and then the other thing is that um, the hard disk is never touched so you can do some research later and check all this stuff out but it's pretty cool um, so I'm just gonna jump into my what I the reason I wanted to show you this today was I'm just gonna jump into my server here and um, I'm on Fedora by the way and uh, I've got my VMware workstation running. It's not uh, running any machines at the moment. But I just wanted to show you something like super cool that I figured out that I could do today. I'm not even sure if I need to have this open or not, but I'm just going to... Let me just see if I close it. Let's see if it'll still... Let's see, refresh. So let's see. Um, so basically, you could just do uh, create a new virtual machine. So I'm connected to my my server. Like if you go to uh, connect to server, all right, it'll ask you for your server details here. So you just type in your server name, or if you're like on Active Directory, you could just put the name. But if not, you could just put the IP address here, and then your username and password. But you will have to be administrator to do this, obviously. So I already have mine here. Um, so I'm just gonna do uh, create new virtual machine and it's gonna ask me like some questions. So I'm just gonna do typical for now. I'm gonna do Linux and I'm gonna select um, other 64 bit. And then I'm just gonna call it, let's just call it um, Kali and we're gonna do Actually, I'll just call it Cali for now because I'm probably going to delete it later. So what I'm going to do here is just open this little... Now, I have my I have another uh, VM here, and I have some... Uh, I've got this particular one set up in here for the time being, just to show you. And I'm also going to just show you on this window like what it's going to use with regards to resources and stuff. So... Uh, my server is just running Windows Server 2016. Not a big deal. It's just a, a test server. So, um, so you just go next, and then it's going to ask you the maximum disk size. So I'm just going to put it like 20. Let's say 26. That should be fine. I'll just or 28 is fine. And then store virtual disk as a single file. And you'll see here in a second. And I'll show you the cool part about this. So this is great if you don't have like a lot of disk space, right? Um, hit next, and then I'm gonna customize the hardware. So for memory, I'm gonna do 4096 processors. I'm gonna do one processor with two cores for now. And I'm gonna use, uh, this right here is use remote ISO image. 
So I'm going to go browse, and it's already selected for me because I already used it once before, so I'm going to click OK. And then network, I'm just going to do bridged, sound, and whatever. I don't have to worry about it. Um, video card, I am going to do accelerate 3D graphics, and then I'm going to give it um, one gigabyte. So I'm going to hit close, and then let's see, finish, and then close, and it's going to power this machine on. And so you can see, I'm going to go in here, and automatically, it it when it starts, you you should be able to just click in that window there. And I'm going to go to uh, live forensics mode. So I'm going to hit enter. So as you can see now, um, I'm just going to close the side window here. It's going to boot up in a sec. So you can see here, um, it's now created this new folder, which has, so far, it only has the RAM. That's all it's taking up. And the disk isn't taking up very much space at the moment, So, which is cool. So we can see if we go into properties here, it's not getting any bigger. It's only uh, taking up what it needs for the machine to run, which is the uh, the memory at the moment, I believe. Like it, it gets like a RAM disk. So if I go back here to the machine, it should, uh, I'm just gonna minimize this for a sec. You can see it doesn't really use a lot of resources either. So I'm gonna make this bigger um so we can get a back like a bigger so you guys could see it i know it's hard to see um because of the display and everything i'm just going to go to power here and let's see i'll do uh never i'm just going to quickly kind of like configure this a little bit okay so yeah so that's it you can see we got this uh cool um virtual machine now running and it's running off the ISO. So, you know, and everything's temporary. Nothing's going to be written to disk um, like while we're using this. So, let me just uh, make some of this stuff bigger. And then, um, there we go. Oh, I forgot to uh, put it on the bottom. I like to keep it on the bottom because it's just. When I'm doing the VMs like this, and then I'm gonna do uh, just gonna make the fonts bigger and everything so you guys can see it. So basically, now we're like in the forensics mode. So that's that's more or less how you get it going, and it's the same process uh, to do it this way as it would be to do it on a laptop or in your computer. This is considered uh, you know live booting and using the forensics mode for all your testings and whatnot. So you can see here, we're all done that now, and I'll just um, open up. And you can see here we're on the same, I'm on the, because I have it on bridged over here, um, you can see that I'm on the same subnet as my Fedora machine. So if I go to Fedora here and do the same thing, you can see I'm on the same, uh, same subnet so if I wanted to just for example I could just run like you know some uh, enumeration or something just to show you that nothing will be saved um, to the disk so let's just say we're gonna do my oops let's just say I do my uh, subnet and I'm just gonna do like a quick scan just do a little quick scan there it should scan the network just fine I can even do like a net discover I, I guess let's see let's try Should only take a minute. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. So you can see, like, um, now I'm doing, and you can see here, even after doing a little bit of work or whatever, I'll just stop this for a sec. Um, so you can see here, I've got some devices and stuff that are 
it shows all the details, right? It shows all the machines over here on this side. If I can make this bigger, I'm not gonna make this bigger. Uh, there we go. Okay, so you can see all the different devices here, and you can, right, click each advice, a device and get the details. So, and you can see here that we're still at four four gigabytes on the server so we're not taking up any disk space I mean obviously if I save a bunch of stuff to the hard drive right now it's gonna start like the disk is gonna start to grow but in the meantime you know if you're just doing like a quick uh, CTF or something or if you're just doing like a lab or whatever um, and you can see like when it's running I'm not really doing much and um, it's not really taking up any any of the CPU. So let's just try starting up Metasploit and see what happens there. I mean, it uses a little bit of the CPU, but I mean, it only has, I think it only go to like, shouldn't really go past 50% um, anyway. So. So that's cool. I mean, everything works just the way that it should, All right? So let's just try Firefox and see how that goes. And so, like I said, everything in here is going to be temporary. So whatever we do, um, you know, whatever we're we're doing right now at this particular moment, once once we shut everything down, it's all going to be gone. So I'll show you what I mean. So if you keep an eye on this uh, window over here, you can see we got the Kali one there. So if I go ahead and shut this down now, it's gonna shut down and then let me just bring this back over here. So now let's say we've done like our exercise, whatever we're doing, our campaign. You could just go in here now and delete this, delete from disk and hit yes and then boom there it goes now it's gone so you know the benefit over that is that if you want to have like if you have an additional machine or a server or a server that you have access to that has VMware workstation you can create machines locally and then use them on your your workstation so I, I don't know I just think that's pretty cool so anyway um, that's it for that. I uh, hope you like this one. Um, obviously, you can also make, uh, you know, you can create virtual machines on your own, uh, your own workstation as well. So just remember when you open up VM VMware Workstation, you just go connect to a remote server, and then that's how I kind of got that thing going. And then uh, it's always going to be there in the tab unless you disconnect. So. So I think this is kind of cool because if you have like, if you have another computer or an old computer, it doesn't even have to be like really high spec. You could set it up this way, and you could even probably run, um, you know, Windows Core or some one of the free one of the free versions and do it that way, right? Or even run, um, you know, a Linux server that's free, and then. You could, you know, span machines between the two. So, anyway, I hope you guys like this one. I uh, just thought I'd quickly share this thing that I kind of figured out today that I could do. I never really did anything like that before. I normally, when I make, um, you know, virtual machines, I normally do it, like, on that actual machine that I'm on. So, just the fact that you can, like, you know, put it on another machine, I, I think that's kind of cool, you know. Um it saves resources, so I don't think you can do it with VirtualBox, uh, from what I understand. So, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Ciao.